good, but you're still a player. I don't need another player. What I need is a DM, a creator, a builder. So that intro took way too long to put together. Anyway, as of the day this video is being uploaded, Bone Lab will have turned one year old today. Yay, woohoo, happy birthday, Bone Lab, yay! Yay, you're one year Oh, that's right, I'm alone. Anyway, it's been a wild year for Bone Lab. The launch, the updates, the doors that require these damn key cards open, where the fuck hey. are the key cards? But most importantly, the mods. But what's the point of this video? Well, with Bone Lab turning one year old today, I wanted to make this video kind of a retrospective slash recap of the past year of Bone Lab and just cover what's been established so far. So let's get right into it. The hype for Bone Lab started as early as the first trailer we were shown for it at one of the meta gaming showcases. It looked cool, it looked fun, it was going to be native on the Quest 2, there was a lot of hype for this game. But then there was silence for a good couple months until... Oh my gosh, wait, no, just made a video on Bone Lab. So. Bone Lab is coming out September 29th. Wait, it's launching this Thursday? This announcement broke the VR community. No one was expecting this release date, and the hype for this game skyrocketed. But eventually, we did get the launch of the game on that Thursday, and it wasn't quite what any of us were expecting. Now, the game did come with upgrade mechanics from Boneworks, more guns, which uh, I definitely didn't spend too much time using, and the Bone Lab, which was really cool, and still kinda is. But it also came with kind of a lackluster campaign, some kind of janky climbing mechanics, and the Ford NPC looking like he spent way too much time in the void. What have they done to you, my child? Now, obviously, this is still a lot to cover, so I'm gonna break this down in smaller sections. I feel like this is a good place to start, given that Bone Lab's version of Mero is much more advanced than Boneworks. The first thing most people tend to notice is that the guns in Bone Lab just felt so good to use. They had better weapon handling, an eject button on both controllers, and an expanded arsenal of guns, which when going to the gun range level, made you kind of feel like John Wick. AR-15, 11.5 inch, compensated with an iron bonded bolt carrier. The Benelli M4, custom bolt carrier release and charging handle, textured grips. Climbing in parkour was adjusted. It was definitely made easier and smoother compared to Boneworks in the sense of climbing from one ledge to another, but in some instances it can be a little bit janky, especially when you're hanging onto something and the legs don't really know what to do, they're trying to hang onto a ledge, but what if there really isn't a ledge? It's just a bit of a confusing mess, and it can be a little bit janky at times. Aside from those two obvious things though, along with a couple tweaks to the physics, unarguably the biggest mechanic out of the Bone Lab was the avatars, or the avatar system. Adding realistic proportions and, well, physics to different avatars was a good idea in concept, but it also feels like it probably could have been expanded on a little bit more. Now, out of the six base avatars they give you, I'd say three of them are definitely very useful, but the other three either have better skins or they don't really feel like they serve a purpose. And I'm also 90% sure they just added the white avatar as an excuse to have an anime skin in it. 
aha, look, it's a cute anime girl with jiggle physics. Even though the avatars do feel kind of underwhelming, I'd argue they are probably in a pretty good state to where they're accessible for most people, but also allow for Mars to have their own avatars without completely breaking the game. In addition to avatars though, we got unarguably the most satisfying thing I've ever felt in VR, the body log on your arm. Simply pulling this thing is a And that pretty much covers all the mechanical improvements that Bone Lab has over Boneworks. So with all this, you'd imagine the campaign would at least be pretty good, right? Looking back, the campaign was painfully short. It was so short that I literally finished the entire thing twice on the first day of launch because my data got wiped in my first save for some unknown reason. It's so short, I'm just going to summarize it for you right now in less than one minute. You wake up as a sentient NPC in Fantasyland where all your friends are trying to hang you. Jimmy goes, I got you fam, and gives you a knife to cut yourself down. You make your way through the underground area of Fantasyland until you eventually reach the Bone Lab. You play some mini games, solve an annoying crane puzzle, and a big area opens for you. You make your way to an abandoned developer room and use a lever to open a vite that supposedly leads you to the void. You fight some enemies and ride on a minecart ride until you actually fly into the void. Or not. You wake up in a new area, fight some more enemies, until you find Jimmy where he says, yeah, you're too weak, go get some avatars or something, before he yeets you into the elevator. You play through six levels to get six avatars, and Jimmy goes, okay, yeah, you're ready, see you in the void. Wait, isn't that where we are? Oh wait, never mind, we're back in the bone lab. You break into the Boneworks engine, play through level which uses some of the new avatars you got, take an elevator back to Fantasyland, and kill the friends who tried to hang you before. You find Jimmy's hand reaching down to you, take it up to the void, get in the car with Jimmy, and uh, what? Wait, that, that, that's the end? Wait, no, no, there should be more. I paid $40 for this game. Where's the rest of it? But is playing through the campaign itself actually fun? Eh, uh, yeah, sure. Lows themselves offer a fun mix of combat, exploration, and just feeling cool in general. But the biggest flaw it has is that it's so painfully linear. Normally linear games aren't a bad thing. I mean, just look at Resident Evil 4. It is linear from start to finish, but it works because you're limited on what Leon can actually do in the game, and it fits the game's design. This type of linear level design doesn't really work for a physics-based game where the player has so much freedom. An example of how this was used well in Boneworks was the warehouse level. Yeah, the level itself was kind of linear, but the options you had from getting to point A to point B were much more vast compared to the options you have in Bone Lab. In Bone Lab, each level boils down to three things, for the most part. Run from point A to point B, kill some enemies, and solve some puzzles on the way. That is it. There is no real room for player creativity aside from just the different ways you can kill enemies. It really feels like the campaign should have been bigger than what it was, but thankfully there is more stuff to do. While the campaign might have been a little lackluster, the minigames definitely make up for it. Somewhat. As they are genuinely addicting to play and replay. Starting with attack trials, they just scratch that itch of just wanting to run around and shoot or stab things. I'd argue that all the maps are equally good at accomplishing this, but the ones I go back to the most are Neon District and Street Puncher. Neon District offers that fun arena shooter style of game, while Street Puncher just lets you beat the shit out of everything, and it is so much fun. The parkour is slightly less awesome due to the, uh, jank, but still pretty fun. Dungeon Warrior and Rooftops are probably my favorite parkour levels. Dungeon Warrior just lets me pretend I'm actually strong, like an American Ninja Warrior kind of guy. Well, Rooftops makes me feel like I'm playing Mirror's Edge VR, until I remember that strat exists. The arena is similar to the attack trials, but provides more things for you to actually shoot at or beat the crap out of. The fantasy arena works best for this with the different challenges, but I don't really care for the other levels, personally. The experimental levels were definitely, uh, a thing. And the same thing could be said about the sandbox. That is, until you add... Which we will touch on later because these were not really available at launch. Okay, now we're past the launch content. Let's talk about what we got post-launch. Despite Stress Level Zero stating that Bone Lab will receive support for them for the next couple of years, as of uploading this video, this game has only gotten two, technically three updates. The first update happened almost a month after launch on October 20th, 2022, and it fixed a lot of the major issues the game had with the launch. Namely, a lot of bug fixes, getting rid of the confusing nature of the crane puzzle and the moon level, or at least making them less annoying, and removing the random avatar changing during the pillar level when you got hit by an enemy, which, thank God, I don't know why this was a thing to begin with. Aside from that, we really didn't get any new things until a month later, on November 22nd, 2022. 
This second update fixed and added a lot more. Aside from adjustments to some levels like Sprint Bridge and finally fixing Ford, we were given another avatar to unlock, two more guns, two more melee weapons, 30 more unlockable props, a way to unlock the skeleton NPC, and uses for keycards by adding doors in each level that could be unlocked by a keycard that led to a secret developer area. This update added quite a lot for returning players to discover and have fun with, and it was a really good quality of life patch. But then there was also a third secret beta patch in about March of this year. I don't know exactly when this came out. It added a gacha machine to unlock everything and maybe some more props, but that's about it. So that's basically all we have in terms of updates for Bone Lab. Stress Level Zero pumped out two pretty big game changing updates and a smaller beta update, but since then they've been pretty radio silent. But even though communication with Stress Level Zero and the updates have been kind of lackluster, they've at least built a good foundation to keep this game alive and going through its use of. Stress Level Zero has stated that the game is roughly 30% focused on mods, but with how much we've gotten in the past year, I'd argue this game is roughly 70 to 90% mods because holy shit, there are a lot of mods. The devs initially gave modders the Marrow SDK to add their own stuff, and people have gone wild with it. We've got maps, avatars, guns, and so much more. I even tried modding my own avatar into the game, and it works. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, please help. That's just the base Marrow SDK though, because the absolute chads of Lava Gang have updated Melon Loader, which was the original popular Boneworks modder, to work with Bone Lab. And it opens up so much. But if we were to cover all the popular mods ever made for Bone Lab, we'd be here for about 10 hours or probably more. So I'm gonna cover some of the best mods I think have been made in the past year in this quick lightning round. Rexmex Weapon Pack adds so many toys, I, I, I mean guns, to the game that are just so much fun to use. SMGs, assault rifles, pistols, there's even a butterfly knife in there for some reason. Why is it there? I don't know. Regardless, it's a fun pack with a crap ton of weapons made by Rexmex. Most of the avatar mods are kind of the same, so it's really down to personal preference on which one you enjoy the most. Personally, the two avatars I use the most are the Wesker avatar from Resident Evil 5 and the Homelander avatar, simply because I think both are really cool villains and Homelander has laser eyes. Unarguably, the most impressive modded map, in my opinion, for Bone Lab is Space Lab. It is literally a mini version of space that you can traverse and fly through, and it is such a cool map. Each planet is habitable by you alone, and it's so much fun to just mess around with in low to zero gravity. There's only been a handful of vehicle mods made for this game, but unarguably the coolest one is definitely the UH-60 helicopter. I can't think of a single other VR game that lets you pilot a f***ing helicopter, and it is so much fun. I expressed in my Roblox VR video how much I loved Portal, and how I would literally sell my firstborn to play Portal in VR, and this mod is the closest thing I have to- what? We'll save that for another video. But yeah, it's basically a working Portal gun in VR, and it's so cool. The Fusion mod gets its own section just because it adds multiplayer to Bone Lab. I tried it and had some issues with it, but still a pretty cool idea. That's the lightning round for great mods in Bone Lab that I definitely am not biased on at all. Definitely. Now obviously, these aren't the only mods for Bone Lab, there is still the entire mod.io page. But just goes to show how crazy people have gone with modding Bone Lab. Bone has had a crazy year. Despite receiving only three updates in the past year, one of which isn't even official, it's still going strong with its community on Quest and PC VR. And despite some of its shortcomings, it's easily made up for it through replayability and modability. The strong physics-based foundation for the game and the built-in mod support have made this another success for Stress Level Zero and the VR industry as a whole. Was it the groundbreaking VR game that it was infinitely hyped to be? No. But I feel like that was kind of a good thing because it set the expectations for the VR community at a healthy level for other VR games, and the game itself is pushing other VR developers to put out fully polished and worthwhile products. However, I do hope that one day we'll get another update for this game from SLZ, along with plenty of more incredible mods. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. 
I post here whenever I have videos ready, and I currently live stream on Mondays at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. But I'm looking to change that so more people can watch my stream on the weekends. Also, if you're not part of the Discord, that's also linked down below. But before we end the video, I just want to say this. Looking back at this game has given me a real sense of time, not only just for Bone Lab, but also for how far my VR channel has come. Despite having a VR headset for over a year, I didn't start making VR content until the release of Bone Lab. We're going over 3,000 subscribers strong in the first year, and I can't be happy with that number. So I propose a toast. I don't have a cup. Here's the first year of my content, the first year of Bone Lab, but more importantly, the continuation and growth of virtual and augmented reality. Thank you.